Once you've compiled your project with no errors, you're ready to put it on the board. But first, if you're working on a personal laptop, you need to install the USB blaster drivers for the Altera board. You can find them in your C drive in Intel FPGA Lite 18.0 Cordis drivers. Just run the dpinst program right here. You may have to restart Cordis after they've installed. And this should already be done on the lab PCs, so you can skip this step if you're using one of those. When you've done that, go to the Tools tab and click Programmer. Now you need to make sure your Altera board is connected to the PC. The USB blaster cable needs to go into the port on the Altera board nearest the corner. There's a second port that it fits into, but that one won't work for this. You want to see USB blaster right here next to hardware setup. If it says no hardware, click the hardware setup button and change the currently selected hardware to USB blaster. Next, you need to make sure the compiled output file is selected. My laptop does this automatically, but if you don't see this Intel icon here with the arrows, you'll need to select it manually. Just click add file and it will be the .sof file in the output files folder. Once that's done, just click start. If you did everything right, you should see a success message in the progress bar. Sometimes the first programming attempt fails, so try it one more time if that happens. If that still doesn't work, check your board connection, make sure the board is plugged in and powered on, and make sure you imported your pin assignments and set your top level module to system DE2. Looking at the board, we can see the project design in action. Our project should take the values of the two switches on the right, run them through an AND gate, and then run the result of that through an inverter, and output the result to the green LED. This is logically equivalent to a NAND gate, which is always 1 unless both inputs are 1. So the green LED should be lit unless both the rightmost switches are on. We can see that they're both off right now, and the green LED is on. If we flick switch 0 on, the green LED stays on, as we'd expect. The red LED above the switch also lights up, as was intended. If we turn switch 0 off and switch 1 on, the green LED also stays lit. Only when we have both switches on does it turn off. And it lights back up when a switch turns off again. Clearly, the design works as planned. 